I'm Andrea, and you're watching the Texas State Aquarium's monthly program, The Current. Here at the Aquarium, our mission is to connect people with nature and inspire conservation of the Gulf of Mexico. In this YouTube program, we will be showing you behind the scenes and keeping you up to date on what we do and what we have to offer here at the Texas State Aquarium. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch every month for The Current so you don't miss any exciting news or events. The Texas State Aquarium is excited to announce another significant gift to our Campaign Caribbean, the Aquarium's capital campaign which will fund the largest expansion in our 24-year history. We're glad to make this donation to the Aquarium with the Grey Stops on whatever you're going to call it again. <laughs> Memorial 4D Theater. And the amount of... And the amount of... Woo! The gift is earmarked for the naming of a 4D theater in the Caribbean Journey Experience, the first theater of its kind south of San Antonio. The $50 million Caribbean Journey Edition will introduce aquarium guests to sights, sounds, and the vibrant wildlife of the Western Caribbean. Be sure to follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook for more updates on this expansion. Last month, the aquarium received six juvenile alligators from the Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge in Louisiana. Here with us now is Aquarius Ryan to tell us more about these fascinating creatures. Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm an Aquarius here at the Texas State Aquarium. And today we are adding six new baby gators on exhibit in Back Bay Marsh. And this is one of our new gators. Her name is Lily. And she comes from Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge in Louisiana. We have an exchange program with Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge and we raise their hatchlings until they're large enough to go back and be released in the wild. And this is a hatchling. She hatched about two weeks ago. And we're going to keep her for about a year until she's about a foot or two in length, and then we'll take her back. Thanks, Ryan. We'll be right back after this message. Today we are able to release a brown pelican. He came into our hospital about two months ago, was pretty sick, kind of down, not in good body condition, and we were able to nurse him back to health, to develop his flight muscles again, and today we released him here at Roberts Point Park. Our floating phantoms jellyfish exhibit is fascinating to visitors. Seeing these mesmerizing, stinging creatures from a safe perspective is just incredible. Our 800 gallon exhibit at the aquarium features a wide array of jellies, and Aquarius Victoria is here to tell us a little bit more about them. Thanks so much for being here with us, Victoria. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Victoria, what types of jellyfish do we have here at the aquarium? Here at the aquarium, we have several types of warm water and cold water jellyfish. Mm -hmm. We have upside down spotted lagoons and Atlantic sea nettles, those are considered warm water here. And we also have moon jellies, comb jellies, and Pacific sea nettles, which are cold waters. Okay. And how do jellyfish swim? Most jellyfish swim by quickly expanding and contracting their bell. It creates that pulse-like movement that everyone is so familiar with jellyfish having. Okay. But there is also another way that some jellyfish swim. They have tiny hair-like cilla along the bells of their, um, along the bells of the jellyfish, and it goes like little hairs quickly moving, and it's kind of like a rowboat for them. Okay. And how do they eat? Um, most jellyfish, or all jellyfish, have mutocytes along their tentacles, and whenever that comes into contact with prey, it shoots out the nematocyst, which is a stinging cells, and it allows them to latch onto the prey, and then the tentacles will just retract and bring the food to their mouth. Okay. And how do we get our jellyfish here at the aquarium? We started off by trading with other aquariums. If they had surplus, we would get them. And um, now we are trying to be self-sufficient with our jellyfish, so we are culturing, um, also known as breeding them. Okay. And we are currently breeding four species, uh, spotted lagoons, Pacific sea nettles, moon jellies, and our upside down jellyfish. Okay. And recently we've had fire off of our Pacific sea nettles. They're oh, wow. about two weeks old now, and so far doing good. If you'd like to find out more about our jellyfish here at the Texas State Aquarium, be sure to visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org. Aquarium, an immersive experience. And now on to a slippery subject. 
Often feared and misunderstood animals, eels are very fascinating creatures, and we happen to have four species of eels here at the aquarium. Here to explain all about them is Aquarius Raphael. Thanks for joining us, Raph. Hey, thanks for having me. My name is Raphael, and I'm going to talk to you about the eels that we have here at the aquarium. We actually have four different species of moray eels, and moray eels are a type of eel, and they're in a family, and there's about 200 species of them. And they're diverse, and they like to live all, all over the world. Uh, so here we have four species. Our largest ones are the green morays, and then we have some purple mouth morays, and then also um, we have a black edge moray that lives in the near shore, and then we have a bonus zebra moray that's actually not found here in the Gulf of Mexico, but it's found in the Pacific waters. Can you explain to us how and what they eat? What do eels like to eat? Well, they depends on the species. A lot of them actually will eat fish, clam, shrimps, um, and then also depending on their type of, uh, of teeth, uh, for example, the zebra moray will only eat shrimp. He will not eat anything else. Now, all the other fish uh, are eels. They will eat uh, fish or clam. And what kind of unusual behavior do eels display sometimes, Raph? An interesting thing about eels is they like to hide, and they can actually cram themselves in really small spaces. Our largest eel, his name is Houdini. He lives in the Flower Gardens uh, exhibit, and he's actually over six feet long, but he can squeeze himself into a real small hole that he likes to hide in. And um, for example, here, our little purple mouth moray, he likes to keep his face out, in, out of this uh, crevice here. And uh, they do that a lot in the wild. They'll find a little home, a little cave, or a rubble of rock, and they'll hide in there and kind of keep and poke their face out. And then whenever time, uh, feeding time comes around, they'll snatch something that gets in the way. Or what they'll do is they'll smell um, where a fish is sleeping, and they'll go into that little hole that the fish is uh, sleeping. And then they'll trap it in there, and then it'll become its prey. Um, eels hunt by using their very strong sense of smell. They do not have very good eyesight, so they re really require, um, really depend on their strong sense of smell to find things, especially at night. All eels are usually nocturnal. And what are the flower gardens? Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary is located uh, about 200 miles off the coast of Texas, and it is our closest coral reef system that we have here at home. And it's a, it's a unique system because it's in the middle of nowhere and then all of a sudden it's this big outcropping of, uh, of rocks and salt and that's where a lot of uh, the corals live and it's just high enough for the light to reach the corals. What are some interesting facts that people may not know about eels? Another fascinating thing about eels is they actually have a second set of jaws deep down in their throat. As you can see, he's got his primary mouth, that, the jaws that are open and closing, and he uses that mostly for grasping their prey. As soon as they catch a prey, they actually have a second set that comes out, grasps the prey, and actually pulls the food into its mouth. So the primary jaws is just for catching, and the secondary jaws is actually pulls the food down into their stomach. And we'll be right back after this message. some information about upcoming events at the aquarium. Come to Sea Lab for homeschool science classes on Wednesday, November 19th. Each class is unique and employs hands-on discovery activities. Classes are available for grades K through 12 and are at least two hours long. For more information and reservations, please contact Randy Slayton at 361-881-1200 or visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org. Love animals as much as we do? If so, the aquarium is a great place to volunteer or intern. We will be having a volunteer information session on Saturday, November 8th in the Texas State Aquarium boardroom on the second floor at 9 a.m. Just a reminder, the aquarium will be closed Thanksgiving, but we will reopen the following day, Friday, November 28th, at our normal 9 to 5 hours. And that's all for this month on The Current. Thanks for joining us and be sure to tune in next time to see what's going on at the Texas State Aquarium. For more information about the aquarium or anything you saw in this program, you can visit our website at texasstateaquarium.org. See you next month.